Alaya Vijnan or Alaya consciousness is the storehouse consciousness. So this is, you know, collective consciousness, if you will. So this is the storehouse that stores all those karmic seeds. But the thing here is that I think that one of the key takeaways here is that they're not just your seeds, they're everyone's seeds. You know, so it stores, it stores basically all the, all the, all the karmic seeds. Um, next in the list, Bodhidharma. Bodhidharma, most people would say that Bodhidharma brought Buddhism into China, but that's not really true. Bodhidharma, Buddhism had existed in China for about, you know, a few hundred years before Bodhidharma came in. But what Bodhidharma was, I think, one of the most famous things is meditation. So dhyana is meditation in Sanskrit. Chan is meditation in Chinese. And Zen is meditation in Japanese. The, the, only, the only thing, you know, most people look at Zen and don't realize that it relates back to these others. Um, it, they think that it's something completely different. But basically, it, it has a lot to do with the mind, and I'll go into that in a, in a bit. So everything that appears in the three realms comes from the mind. Hence, Buddhas of the past, present, and future teach mind to mind. Remember Maha Kajyapa um, seeing the flower and smiling and Buddha saying he gets it. You know, so they communicate mind to mind without bothering with definitions. So the student says, and I, I think probably a lot of you are asking this, but, but if they don't define it, what do they mean by mind? Well, you ask, that's your mind. I answer, that's my mind. If I had no mind, how could I answer? If you had no mind, how could I ask? Um, that which asks is mind through endless kalpas, kalpas is a very long period of time, uh, without beginning. Whatever you do, whatever you are, that's your real mind. That's your real Buddha. This mind is the Buddha, says the same thing. So basically the reason that I wanted to put this up here is that if you, it's a very important notion, at least for me, that mind is Buddha. That I don't necessarily believe in a Buddha, I don't worship a Buddha. I think that there's something in the mind that, um, and, and some ways that we can and communicate mind to mind. I'll, I'll go into satsang a little bit because I think he helps to drive some of this point home. Uh, this is interesting because this starts to get very Tao-like to me, especially because the, the word way in Chinese is Tao. Um, but the great way isn't difficult for those who are unattached to their preferences. Let go of longing and aversion and everything will, uh, everything will be perfectly clear. If you cling to a hairbreadth of distinction, heaven and earth are set apart. If you want to realize the truth, don't be for or against. The struggle between good and evil is the primal disease of the mind. Now I think the thing here is that again, what, what I liked about this is that um, the, the takeaway for me is have faith in your mind. Actually, Shin Shin Ming is trust in mind or trust in heart. The word Shin in Chinese is heart and mind at the same time. It, it does, there's no distinction there. But, um, so having faith in mind as opposed to having faith in some external version of good. Looking at some book somewhere to tell you whether or not what you're doing is the right thing to do. I think, I think there's a sense that we have of what the better thing to do is. And, you know, Satsang's belief was that we should follow that. Um, Wainang, now this is interesting. One thing here is that picture, that's actually him. Huaineng is, is actually preserved. I don't know how it happened. Nobody tried to do it. I, they think somehow it has to have the salt. I, sometimes I make a, you know, somewhat of an off-color joke is that, I don't know, maybe he just learned to sit real still. Um, and that's just him and he's, and he's, and he's in deep meditation. But, the, um, uh, but one of the things here is that I think, again, some of these guys that came later, I think, try to correct where people went off course from some of the teachers that came before. I think some of, you know, some of the people that listened to Bodhidharma about meditation kind of got some of the wrong ideas. So, so, so what one thing saying is that, you know, if you're, you know, if, when you're alive, you keep sitting, you know, without lying down. And when you're dead, one lies without <laughs> sitting up. In both cases, it's stinking bones. You know, so just sitting around doing nothing is not the, really the way to, to accomplish anything. Um, and, 
And, and the other part, I'll just, you know, I'll skip, I'll skip reading the whole thing over, but the, um, the end part is what I really, uh, I really like about Maha. I think that um, when, when, in Mahayana, when they say Maha, it's great. And it's different than our notion of great. Our notion of great tends to be very, very good. Something is very, very good. I don't think that's what they're referring to here. I think what they're referring to by great here is that it includes everything. There's nothing excluded. So it's great, like space is great. Space accepts everything. Everything exists inside space. So, um, so anyway, at, at this point, I, I, just, I just didn't understand. I could, I could see now the relation between uh, you know, what I might have been hearing from Thich Nhat Hanh and you know, some of those earlier Chinese guys that came before, because as Chan Buddhism emerged in China, it, it had no choice. It had to merge with some of those other systems. So what caused that? So here's where I'm going to really just take the leap, okay? Enter Richard Dawkins, okay? We're at, a, we're, at a, we're at a talk tonight that's basically spiritual in nature, because I do consider myself somewhat of a spiritual person, and I'm bringing up Richard Dawkins, okay? You know, one of the most hardcore atheists around. But, um, Richard Dawkins in the, in the Selfish Gene has this uh, concept of means, and it's a, you know, a, a replicator. You know, so, so where genes may carry uh, information you know, through you know, sperm and eggs, means propagate through things um, like imitation. And when I think about the golden thread, when I think about you know, um, things going from Fushi through those other guys and then into India and then seeming to come back, and, and end up with me, you know, having this affinity with Thich Nhat Hanh. It just seemed like there's something traveling there. There's something going through there that isn't necessarily said just completely in the words. It's so, you know, I'm, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm a pretty scientific person. I'm not saying, you know, I'm going to sit here and, you know, read Arthur's mind and, and communicate something deep to Arthur without saying anything. But, it, but at the same time, I think through this. Um, through this uh, um, copying, if you will, or imitation, is a way that somehow we do end up communicating mind to mind. The issue I have with adding atheist views to my, to my path here is that I think, that the problem I have is I feel like atheists throw away the baby with the bathwater. I think they, they, they're anti-theists. They, they don't like anything religious. And I don't think that all you know, religious teaching, well, you know, I don't think all mysticism is bogus. I think some of it, yeah, some of it's, you know, not very useful. But, um, you know, not all religious teachings are bad. There's, I think there's some stuff, I mean, spiritual people, whether, they're, you know, whether they were Buddhists or even, I, I think the biggest shame is in Christianity. In, in Christianity, in the, in, the, in the early days, there were a lot of Christian mystics. You don't hear about them, because the church suppresses their works, because they're inconsistent with the Bible. They're inconsistent with church doctrine. But they're, they're a bit more consistent with some of the things you might hear from Eastern. And I'll, I'll go into that a little later on in the, in the, in the presentation. But, you know, people like um, Dionysus the Aragopagite or um, uh, Meister Eckhart in Germany in, in about the 1300s. Uh, uh, there, there's, uh, you know, the list goes on. I can't remember all the names right now. But these guys wrote volumes. And they were contemplative monks almost like Buddhist monks. And basically they were coming up with notions and ideas, that, but they weren't necessarily consistent with church doctrine. So they, 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 they didn't help put money in the offering basket, I think is the best way to, to look at that. They didn't help to pay the mortgage on the church. Um, because if, if, if everybody believes in equal divinity, if you will, well, why do I have to go to the building? You know, if I can just sit here with my friends and have a nice conversation and feel good and go home, just like some people go home when they're driving home from church, you know, then I don't need that. It's kind of tough to pay the mortgage on the building. 